Um, Psalms 32, verse 5. And it says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgave the iniquity of my sin, Selah. That word Selah means take a pause and think about with God. That was an old musical note, because most of the Psalms were songs. So that was take a pause, think about what you just read and pondered for your own self. Self-examination. Self-righteous people, God stinks in the nostrils of God. Stinks. Isaiah 64. I'm going off my page. But I wanted you to see your self-righteousness doesn't get there. When you think that just because of the clothing you wear, just because of the hair that falls down off your chin, just because you wear a skirt and no pants, just because you do all these things, is self-righteousness. It doesn't make you holy. Right. Amen? Amen? None of that outward crap makes you holy. Amen. All you can make you holy is the intent of your heart. Amen? Amen. 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 I think it's Isaiah 64 and 6 I want it. Let me make sure. Because I didn't have that in my notes. Isaiah 64 and 6. Oh, 64. There you go, right there. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. Alright. <laughs> now watch this. But we are as, as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Our righteousness is, our righteousness is like filthy rags. See, we're covered with Jesus' righteousness once we receive him. So what does God mean by filthy rag? You think that's just a rag you clean the floor with? A filthy rag in biblical Old Testament day was, watch this, ladies, a cotex, a feminine napkin. So your righteousness stinks like a wet feminine napkin. Better than that, a dried up stinking napkin. How does that smell? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Being married, I know what it smells like. I didn't even trash. <laughs> Boy, You smell like a dried up, stinking coat That's hard to preach. <laughs> Maybe it'll change your self righteous attitude then, huh? You know when you smell like that to God. Amen. I thought I would touch that. Go on. <laughs> Go to 1 John. Let's look at some news. Go to 1 John. Boy, that one got you, huh? Woo wee! I like this one, man. I don't want to be self-righteous in God's knowledge. <laughs> Amen. But here's how God expects you to come. Go to 1 John, chapter 1, start at verse 8. For if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh boy. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. So can't nobody ever say they ain't sinned. And one person in this room, boy, my boy, man, I ain't never sinned. You just lie. You just sinned. You liar. Sin. What about Job? Huh? The one that goes to heaven. Who, Job? Mm -hmm. Job sinned? Mm -hmm. There ain't no man that ever been walking that didn't. You name me one. There's only one that was translated. His name is Enoch. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I knew that's who you were talking about. I knew that's who you were talking about. But guess what? He sinned too. You know why? Because he came to the human mouth. Oh, yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Amen. He said, born here. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let's keep moving. James, James 5, a couple books in back. James, chapter 5. Looking at uh, verse 14, 5, 14, and it says, Whereas you know not what shall be of tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appeared for a little time. Am I in the right place? No, I'm sorry. Thank you. My book is too big. Here we go. Thank you. I'll get it together. That's what I wanted. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders.
elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall rise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. That's why I want to get it. And pray one for another that you may be healed. That effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Why did I want all that? Reason being is this. You can't confess your faults one to another. Amen. You need to go to somebody who's mature. Amen. Half the people you try to tell your faults to, they want to use them against you. Amen. Especially if you obey the same. That's why you go in the office and tell a pastor your mess, tell Ryan your mess, or tell me your mess, because you know ain't going to go nowhere. We're mature. Amen? But it also says when you confess, you're healed. Why? Because when you're talking to people who know how to pray to God, that's why I said the fervent prayer of the righteous man of Bela Fervent means your hot prayer. I got a connection with God. Why you want to go talk to somebody who ain't got no connection? They just as messed up as you. It ain't going nowhere. They ain't even serious about God. They have an outward appearance of wanting to worship God. You would know through time whether that person really loves God. I don't care whether they got on a suit, whether they got on uh, khakis. I don't care what they got on. I met some of the most mightiest, righteous people who were dressed in the street in a crazy house. Amen. In prison. But I used to think they had to be looking like they were. Forget that. You don't know who God going to use. Matter of fact, if John the Baptist come out of the woods with fur and eating grasshoppers, and he was a mighty man of God, people thought he was nuts. Amen. So you know they think you are. Come on. Back to Nehemiah 9. Nehemiah chapter 9. Main reason why I'm bringing out all this is because I know we're going to continually do the Holy Communion. I, for those of you who come here regularly and those who are in-house, I want you to understand what you're doing. Get an attitude of forgiveness in your heart. Get an attitude of confession. Get an attitude of repentance. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, because I used to get high and go right to the church and ask God to forgive me before I take it. But you just got high the night before. Guess what? It didn't matter. Because it was my heart. But guess what? From year after year, me taking the Holy Communion, <laughs> because the righteousness of Jesus set me free. Not no man. Amen. Y'all get that. Nehemiah 9 verses, let me get there myself. Nehemiah 9 verses 2 and 3. And it says, And the seed of Israel separated themselves from the strength, people, places, and things, <laughs> and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord, their God. Boy, y'all need to write this down because I'm going to get you. One fourth part of the day and another fourth part of the day they confess and worship the Lord their God. Now what does that say? They're not going to taste their day on 24 hours. When God said, seek me early, a lot of times early in the morning was still night. Amen. You know, in our timeline, we say, what's in the night in the day, right? That's the morning. Hello. So guess what they would do? Because the only time they could work was while it was daylight. Amen. Bear with it. <laughs> Bear with it. <laughs> but the only time they can work is, you know, during the daytime. So that means they got an early spend three hours. One fourth of the day, that was a 12 hour day, they spent three hours reading the word. We can't spend three minutes. They spend the next three hours praying. We can't even pray three seconds. You see how they seek God? Then they went to work. So even before they went to work, they studied their word and they prayed. Then they went to work. Amen. What do you want to do? Have folk just come to church on Sunday for an hour and leave. Don't even think about God the rest of the week. Could care less. No, God is requiring more than that. All I got to do is call on the name of Jesus. I can look any old way, act any old kind of way, and I'm representing Christ. Give me a break. You who claim to be mature, God wants to see a heart change. Amen? Amen. He wants to see a heart change. Excellence ain't because you got on Gucci. Amen? Amen? 
That's just because you got a Rolex. Half the time, those people are going straight to hell. They're worshiping that. Excellence is a heart condition, people. Amen. Excellence says, I serve the Lord. I have a representation. I'm an ambassador and an minister. So guess what I need to look like? I need to have my hair cut. I need to be shaven. I don't care if I got on the best clothes. I still need to be neat. I don't need to be wrinkled.
leading abolition. Now that means the time of cleansing. You know, you see a lot of Muslims do that now. They cleanse their nose, they got a little thing that they do before they go in the presence of their God. Amen? Call that solution. All right? But anyway, <laughs> verse 22. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. But what did Daniel do? Confess his mess? He came clean, dirty. Yeah. Now God said, I'm going to give you skill and understanding. And at the beginning of thy supplication and the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Yeah. Amen. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got a vision, if you got aspiration, how do you need a job? How do you need something? Yeah. Your father owns it all. Yeah. But he needs you to come clean, dirty. You wonder why you ain't getting this job? You need to do a self-examination. You may be saying, well, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I ain't doing nothing. How about your attitude stinks? You may not be doing nothing. Your attitude stinks. You don't even have to say hello. Or if you say hello, you don't, even, you don't mean it. Your motivation is, what can I get from you now? Have you checked to see whether you're lazy? Are you just here working just for yourself? Is it really unto the Lord? You wonder why no job opportunities are coming your way. Because God knows the intent of your heart. Amen. Come clean, dirty. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor tell him, come clean, dirty. Oh, y'all ain't too serious about it. Come clean, dirty. Come clean, dirty. <laughs> you need to do a self-examination. What did we read here? Examine yourself. Quit putting that yellow person. Why haven't I gotten it, God? I kept asking God, why am I out of work so long? What am I doing wrong, Lord? I found out it was my attitude. But guess what? I got the job now. I got the contract now. It's here now. I'm getting ready to fly out of here for a couple weeks. I know some of y'all ain't gonna miss me, but I'll be back. But I got it now. You know why? Because I did a self-examination. I wasn't treating my wife with the right attitude. I wasn't treating my ministry right. I wasn't even treating God right. Jesus. But as soon as I humbled myself and submitted to the things as a man, I thought I didn't have to. The door opened. The door opened. Do a self-examination. It ain't about your name. Ask God, what am I doing wrong? Maybe you ain't talking to him enough. Maybe you're reading your Bible, but you ain't praying. Maybe you're coming to him nasty and ignorant and disrespectful. Because the same way, I'm going to tell you how you know how you're treating God. Watch how you treat your girlfriend, or your boyfriend, or your husband, or your kids. Because the same way you treat them, it's the same way you treat them. Right. Amen. So if you're nasty to them, you're just as nasty to God. So ain't no way in the world you're going to say you're doing things right, and you stink like a dried up stinking cortex. Amen. But when I put this I don't want to smell like a dried up stinking cortex no more. I'm coming to you. You can't even obey authority. You tell them there's a two people in the Bible. One came and said, that the father said, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. The one son said, yeah, Lord, I'm going to go ahead and do it. No problem, Dad. Snuck that out the door, jumped in the van, and rode off, didn't do nothing. I'm paraphrasing. Then another son, he said, would you do this? He said, no, Dad, I don't feel like doing it. He sees Alice. Then as he walked away, he thought better of himself. And what he did what his father told him to do. See? You can be mad, don't want to do it, but you come back. Say, you know what, Daddy? I'm sorry. You're right. I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. Do a self-examination. Confess your mess. And come clean, dirty. Because you're all dirty. You're all dirty. We all deserve a Savior. And we all deserve hell. So come clean, dirty. Amen. Go over to verse, stay in Daniel, Daniel 9, look at verses 3 and 4. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by what? Prayer? Seek by prayer and supplication with what? Fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and the mercy to them that love him and to them that what? Keep the Amen. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 3. Come on, we got a few more. I'll be out your way. Y'all heard from me to out your way with this one? Amen. <laughs> I ain't going to 
stop the God told me to stop anyway. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Verse 19. Matthew chapter 3. Looking at uh, verses 69. 3 verses 69. And were baptized with him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, this must have been John the Baptist baptized again. And I like to say, y'all need to understand something about the Jordan. Now, baptism necessary? No. No. Baptism a commandment? No. Yeah. Amen. It's not. Amen. But do you do it because you love them? Yes. Amen. Amen. Because if that were the case, if baptism was necessary, how to be for the cross? Make it in without baptism. Did you ever ask yourself that question? He sure enough didn't get off that cross. No, he didn't. He's sure. Watch this. And he sure received the recompense of his sin. Yes, he but did. guess what? He still got forgiven. Yeah. And Jesus even told him this day, you should be forgiven. Amen. Amen. But see, you need to understand something about the Jordan. The Jordan was a place where Israel had to step out of faith. See, they got they got carried to the Dead Sea. Remember when they opened up? They walked through it. And then when the Egyptians tried to come through, it crashed. Amen. Boom. They were dead. But when they got to Jordan, it was time for them to step now. They had to step out and fake the eye here. I meant to come back with a message on that. But watch this. The Jordan is where they defecate. They urinate. They do everything in it. Are y'all hearing me? Every nasty thing that they could come up with was thrown in the Jordan. But watch this. God said, go get baptized. Because you know what baptism is? Immersion. So that means they had to have their whole head and body in it. Because baptism says when you rise up, all your sins roll down the river. Right so the dirtiest thing was the same thing that made you clean. Ain't that good? Woo! Come on, man. I ain't get shut. I'll die right in it. Better know it. Leave all my dirt in there. But look at this. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, many of the legalistic people, many of those practicing the law but don't have the heart of Jesus in them, amen, come to his baptism, he said unto them, see, John and Jesus will cuss you out. See, all we see cuss words is full of that word. But watch what he says to him. Oh, you generation of vipers, you snakes, you slippery. <laughs> 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 he said, oh, you generation of vipers, who warned you to flee from the judgment to come or the wrath from God to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for what? Repentance. Yes. Turning away from. And think not to say within yourself, we have Abraham for our father, for I say unto you that God of these stones to raise up children uh, to Abraham. He's talking about you raising you up in this day. Because you can't say my daddy was a preacher. But that's all they were saying. We got Abraham. While well, my mama was a preacher. My uncle served in the church and he was a head deacon. Oh, my daddy was a trustee. Now that's not words, people. This is a personal choice. A heart choice. Like I said the other week when I read this before. I said your parents will be up in heaven while you will be in hell. And they ain't going to hurt, they ain't going to cry, because there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more tears in heaven. But you will be in hell looking up, talking about, think of my mama, think of my daddy. Ladies flying on up. No, oh, Lord. Amen. I'm only being truthful with you. Go to Mark chapter 1. Mark 1. Come on, we got a few more minutes. Oh, man. All right. Because I want to get to this story. And maybe we're close after this story. One of the great examples of a person. Right, let's go to Mark 1. One of the great examples of a person we're going to hear me look at who refused to confess their sin until they got caught. Now we're talking. We're going to look at him in a minute. All right. Mark chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. And it says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and the day of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sin. I want to read that out that you had to go in that Jordan. Amen? Amen? And you have to be baptized. You know, I will never tell nobody they shouldn't get baptized. But baptism is not a prerequisite, prerequisite for salvation. Amen? Somebody tell me, well, you ain't saved because you ain't get baptized. You know, I don't believe in fetal baptism either, taking the baby and have water poured on them. Wow. Baptism is emergent. That's a great ceremony. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But it ain't nowhere to word of God. It's called people. Because after a while, your children have to make their own choice. Amen. So it's up for you to raise that child, to acknowledge who God is, and that child, after a while, knows good from evil, and they make the choice.